welcome to the Lighten Up Podcast with Lauren Polly, your invitation for living on the lighter side of life. I'm Lauren Polly, and I am delighted you have chosen to join me for episode 107, Experiencing Life. Today we're going to dive into life as an experience and life as a set of experiences. Um, if you're anything like anybody else, you probably feel like you're pushed around a whole bunch by this thing called life, where sets of circumstances and experiences show up that feel kind of not like they're of your choosing. Something that you probably wouldn't choose if you had eyes wide awake, super present in your life, and actually had conscious choice to be able to make your own path and set your own path for yourself in the future. That is probably the biggest sticking point that most of us have, that we're a victim to what shows up. Or that whatever the experience that comes out of the blue is the thing that actually shapes us, not our ability to create and pull in the experiences that we desire, actually having the ability to shape our future as we desire it. So this is a heady, heady, heady topic and can be quite a heavy one and the whole show is about lightening up. So just take a breath, get relaxed a little bit, open your mind, open your space and let's see what else is possible here. I found an amazing quote from one of my mentors, Gary Douglas. He's the founder of Access Consciousness. Uh, This is a quote from his How to Become Money workbook and it is one that I have read time and time again. My mind gets a little bit warped around it (laughs) as one does when something of total utter clarity comes piercing through just the crap that you've been buying for so long. This quote says, an infinite being doesn't care what they experience. They only care that they experience. And for me, the comparison between the what and the that is so huge, so profound, and also can be quite simple and take you down the path of actually having experiences come into your life that are more of your choosing and that you actually have a little bit more growing and working room with than feeling pushed around, shoved around, or or um, kind of like getting lost in the undertides of it all. So let's break this down a little bit. If you actually chose to be embodied, you chose to be on this planet at this given time, you chose to actually enter the life that you have and all the elements of it were of your own choosing and your own creation, unconscious, sleepy-eyed or not, what would change in your perspective? If you are an infinite being and you actually chose to be here so that you could experience life, yet you're living from the lie and lamenting the fact that you have to be here and experience life, you're always going to be in a losing battle with yourself. There's something to actually looking at what's true for you and what's true for you always makes you feel lighter. Did you actually come here to experience life? Could acknowledging that you are here to soak up the experience of having a body, building a life, creating, having fun, having pleasure, perhaps going through some growing pains here and there, what would change in your perspective and what would change in your actual day-to-day experience of being embodied? For me, it's fascinating to look at instead of actually fighting the idea that I'm here and fighting the idea that, oh, I have a body now and, oh, I'm here creating, it's actually one that opens you up to the possibility of enjoyment and also that you made a conscious choice to be here. You made a choice to experience. That is the that of Gary's quote, that an infinite being doesn't care what they experience, just that they experience. Moving forward with that, acknowledging that, yes, you chose to be here. Yes, you are here to experience life. The other part of that quote really hit home for me, that we don't really care what we experience. Fascinating. And what if you could actually start to open the space where you could ask for the what? Where you could actually wake up day in and day out and go, what would I like to experience today? What 
bigger creations could I create that would allow me to experience something new and different, maybe a whole new path for myself in my life? And also, what are the elements I'm playing with and choosing to play with day in and day out that are creating my embodiment experience? We don't ask for the what. We don't ask for the energies that we'd actually really love to have in our life. And they may be different for all of us. Me, I really love the energy of peace. It's one that is not valued a lot. Everybody says they want peace, but it doesn't seem to be the hot, sexy topic. People want to go to the limitations and fix their problems. The idea of living a peaceful life is quite boring to a lot of people. For me, it's a bit different. That peace has a sumptuous ability. It's got this beautiful, delicious hum that relaxes me, relaxes my body, and when it does, it expands my space. With that expanded space, guess what? More creation, more awareness, and more action to be taken on. Uh, That for me is one that I love to play with. I absolutely love energies of joy and orgasmic living. Um, There's a whole slew of different energies that may work for you that may be very different than what would work for somebody else. So I would say that's kind of homework for this week if you want to play. Start looking at the energies that you would really love experiencing day in, day out, as the foundation and the building blocks of your life and your embodiment. Start to choose those. What are the energies that are there and what can you actually start to choose that are in line with those energies? And beyond that, could you actually ask for more experiences with those energies to pop? When you're actually looking at creating something big and huge and beautiful, those kind of eyes out goals that we like to set for ourselves, could you have that as part of the equation? You know, regardless of who I talk to about this topic, I work with a lot of people who are creating businesses and creative pursuits and big projects, it's amazing how much our eyes go out with this conversation. We start to actually look at what we would like to experience and it's like the big book, it's the big movie over here, it's the big business, it's this ideal that we have of what would actually make us happy in the end. Um, A lot of it I find is super outcome focused, where if I can reverse engineer this whole thing to get the one perfect outcome, that's going to give me the energies that would make me happy and enjoy being here. And in some perspectives, that's the only way people are willing to create is if they actually get that one experience that they're willing to have. That's such an interesting point of view. It also can be quite limiting too. What about all of the steps to get there? Now, this is kind of an interesting conversation. I'd love for you to look for yourself. Where are you eyes out on one specific goal, one specific outcome as the experience of your life that may be blinding you with the day-to-day experiences that you're having? And it's not that you have to pull back from those bigger ass at all. Yes, absolutely go for them. But what can you actually start looking at in your day-to-day experience that would actually assist you in getting there? Uh, just a practical example from my own living, I did this dynamically with my book creation. You know, My book was a huge project. It was three years in the making with writing and producing it and launching it out in the world. And it's going through an interesting morphing process, process now where I'm working on the audio book and then I've got some documentaries in the works. Um, so it's been fascinating to look at like the big burst of the creation and me um, with the energy I took which I take a lot quite frankly is kind of like a dog with a bone (laughs) I get focused on one thing I see the possibility and god damn it I'm going there (laughs) and what was fascinating about the whole process especially writing the book and that initial production of it every element of my life kind of took a back seat. I really wasn't present with my finances because I was creating money just to be able to funnel to the money the book required. Um, The finances for me and my body took a huge back seat. I turned a blind eye for it and I didn't create super delicious stuff for me and my body during that period. Um, My body movement, that took a back seat too. I was sitting at the computer all the time writing and working on these marketing proposals. Um, My relationships kind of took a back seat as well. And it was 
was fascinating for me not making myself wrong for what I chose because I get what I've created in a huge way. Also, where I kind of went to either or. My experience that I was really going after was the finishing project of that book, being out in the world. I didn't have maybe the knowledge base or the information that I could ask for both and choose that way. And that's been a huge changing point that I've been making for this next cycle, working on my audiobook and the documentaries and the projects that are following my initial launch of the book, was to actually be able to look at Yes, I'm creating this beautiful thing. That's a delicious experience. It's also an experience I'm looking to gift to others. I'm also looking day in, day out, what am I creating that I'm surrounding myself with? What experience, when I open my eyes in my bedroom in the morning, am I looking for? What are the finances I want to play with on a daily basis? What is the movement for my body? What are the relationships and the fun and the joy that me experiencing day in and day out actually get to lead to in the end? It's fascinating because if you tap into that energy for a second, that delicious, like sumptuous, cushiony living day in, day out, knowing you're supported, you're joyful, you're present, you're choosing what works for you, what does that actually lead to the bigger creations? Can you actually see how that would play right into creating something bigger, maybe better, maybe bigger, maybe better? in your own perspective. Instead of just going eyes out and thinking that you have to suffer day to day to be able to create that one big experience you're looking at, what if you could actually ask for both? Be here, be now, look to see what your embodiment reality is, your daily experience of life, and how that can lend itself to creating with more ease. I find so frequently that people either do one or the other. They focus so much on the day-to-day stuff that they lose the creative ability to go huge. Also, the people who are really asking for something huge and different and taking their life on a different path, they turn a blind eye to the day-to-day stuff like I did. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be either or. You can do both. Uh, If you think about life as a beautiful quilt, especially the ones they used to make back in the olden days where every single patch on that quilt, every single square, there was something beloved about it. It was a moment in time, an experience, an energy, a relationship, whatever that was for the person, it had some sort of beloved, acknowledged, honored quality about it. That quilt made up of all of those different experiences, got this beautiful holistic energy for the person's life, their embodiment, and their existence on this planet. It wasn't one patch for the one accomplishment. <laughs> it wasn't one choice to rule them all. It was, a, it was this myriad of all these different energies that actually blended together to create a life that was well-lived and well-loved. And for me, looking at creation, what if we were actually choosing that? If we were acknowledging we were here to experience life, we're here for the that, that we get to experience, and then we add in this added information, we don't go a blind eye to what we're experiencing, we actually start to ask for it actively. We start to choose it consciously, to actually look not just at the big projects, not just at the day-to-day, but both of them coming together to create more for the whole. What quilt of life would you love to experience? We're on your deathbed at age 105 or whatever that is for you. You get to look back and go, God damn, I did good. (laughs) I did good. I put everything that I had into it and I eat every ounce of pleasure and creativity out of this life sit with this for a while. Listen again to this episode. There are some bigger advanced energies here. I invite you to unpack it in your own time and space. And as always, you have questions, you have comments, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear how this one in particular touched you. You can reach me at lauren at laurenpolly.com and I'll put the link to the newsletter down below in the show write up if you'd like more reminders about these beautiful episodes coming your way. Have an amazing week and I will chat with you next Tuesday. Mm-hmm.